Hey book lovers and random people who just happened to stumble upon this video. Hello. Today I'm going to be talking about a book I just read about a week or two ago and I'm going to tell you my thoughts and feelings on it. <laughs> the book is called Her Name's Rose by Claire Allen. I kept accidentally calling it Her Name is Rosie. I don't know why. I I couldn't get the Rosie out of my head so I kept saying her name was Rosie but her name was Rose and it's a book by Claire Allen I got this book at the same time that I got the Keeper of Lost Things my first book review that I just did slash book run I also got another couple of books with it they were all for £2 on Amazon so I hadn't heard of it before that it just popped up when I was browsing books and I saw it was only two pounds so I couldn't resist and uh, it sounded quite interesting so I will read the back to you and you can make up your own minds if you think this would be a book that is for you. Her death has created a vacancy. When Emily lets a stranger step out in front of her she never imagines that split second will change her life but after Emily watches a car plow into the young mother killing her instantly she finds herself unable to move on. And then she makes a decision she can never take back because Rose had everything Emily ever dreamed of. A beautiful, loving family, a great job and a stunning home. And now Rose's husband misses his wife and their son needs a mother. Why couldn't Emily fill that space? But as Emily is about to discover, no one's life is perfect and not everything is as it seems. When I read that, I was quite interested. It was different than any kind of normal kind of mystery type thriller book that I've read normally it's you know someone's been murdered and oh what, what happened kind of thing with this I thought was different because the character Rose is killed in a hit and run which if you don't know what that means it's when somebody driving their car either crashes into another vehicle or crashes into a person but they hit something they crash and instead of staying at the scene of the crime they take off and speed away hit and run like the game the simpsons hit and run <laughs> did anybody else used to play that i love that game so that to me it was quite interesting i was very curious about how it was going to play out i thought is emily how is she going to insert herself into this other woman's perfect life. I was, I was curious about that aspect and I was curious about what else might be happening. So our character is Emily and Emily, uh, she's single, she lives on her own. She works at a call center, is it a call center? I think it's a call center. I think it was to do with internet I can't remember <laughs> but basically she decides to she's so intrigued or she's dramatized by what happened because obviously if she hadn't have let Rose and Rose who had her her young son with her I'm trying to think what the age was I can't remember if he was one or two something makes me think he was two but it doesn't really matter but she had a little boy Jack with her and he was in a little prom and obviously Emily decides to let Rose go in front of her. I think they, they they rode down in a lift together. They were she was shopping, Rose was shopping, and they were in like a lift together and Emily lets Rose go out first and she leaves the shopping centre and she crosses the road first and she gets mowed down by a vehicle. It speeds off into the night and so Emily our character Emily who has had a troubled relationship before from an abusive boyfriend she convinces herself that that car was intended for her and that her ex-partner could be behind it and has hired somebody to mow her down but Instead, she's let this other young woman go out in front of her and subsequent, subs and subsequently, I cannot say that word, subsequently 
she's killed. Her little boy is absolutely fine. She pushes the, I think she, when she sees the car speeding towards her, she, mother's instinct, she pushes the son out of harm's way. So the little boy is absolutely fine, but she's killed instantly. R.I.P. Rose. <laughs> so our character of Emily is intrigued, I don't know if intrigued's the right word to use, but she's kind of invested now in Rose and Rose's life because she feels she feels kind of responsible for letting her go out first. She has this doubt and this fear in her mind that the car was intended for her. Um, I say um too much in these videos. God sake, Laura. Cut that out. Okay. Ah! Oh no! Oh, I just spilt my tea. Oh dear. Oh. Oh. Oh Jesus, oh, oh, look, it looks like I've peed myself, that, a tiny little bit, and look how much, it, oh, for God's sake, where was I, I completely forgot, Emily reads up some articles on the hit and run, and through that she finds out what Rosie's full name is, so she looks her up on Facebook, and she is totally entranced by this magical, amazing life she appears to live and so she spends all night like scrolling through her facebook seeing her lovely post sees like photos of her wedding day photos of her son she works out or she finds out that rose worked at a dentist she sees photos of her with all the like the the staff and it looks so lovely and she's suddenly compelled feeling so shitty about her life thinking that Rosie's life looks amazing. We've all done it. Like I think it was such a good kind of, in this day and age, it's such a good kind of topic to focus on because so many, I see so many people on my Facebook that live the sort of life you just think, wow, you know, you've got your happy little family, you're mar you may be married young, you've got kids. You're maybe like, maybe you've started a business or doing something that you love. And it's so nice to see when somebody is doing really well. But a lot of the time that can be, not just for show, but obviously you're only going to show the good parts on your Facebook. But we're all guilty of, you know, looking through other people's profiles and thinking, God, I want that life. But we don't know what's happening behind the scenes. And I think that's a pretty well touched upon topic in this book. Because that's what it really comes down to. It's thinking that someone's life is perfect just because of what you're seeing on social media. And a lot of the times it's not. Look at all the people, all the celebrities that look like they're enjoying life, living life to the fullest and happy to wake up every day when really they're struggling to get out of bed some days. They have no motivation. Maybe they did something great yesterday and they were posting about it online, but maybe today they're feeling miserable. Social media is actually, I believe social media is amazing in some ways. Keeping up with friends and seeing what they're up to is great. But a lot of the times it makes us a bit feel a bit shitty. Especially when I see people my age. I'm 22, nearly 23. Especially when I see people my age having kids and getting married. And I just begin to think, God, why am I not even like in a relationship yet? And other people my age are getting married. Oh, social media. But anyway, after Emily searches Rose's profile and goes through all her posts, her pictures, and she reads all the lovely tributes friends and family have shared on her page. Emily decides to go to the funeral. She takes a day off work and she sits at the back and just listens to all the beautiful words people have to say. Rosie's husband gets up and makes a lovely little speech. After that, she returns to work and she is fired. <laughs> Poor Emily, as if her life couldn't get any worse. I keep touching that wet patch and it is doing my hair. After that, she goes back to work and she is subsequently, I can not say that word, subsequently fired for basically taking time off. I think she said she was going to the dentist, but she's 
this part kind of doesn't make sense to me because she was photographed by like there was a whole lot of press outside taking photos of everybody at the funeral and she's in the background of a photo and her boss manager this young boy sees her in a photo like how unlucky is that like why was he looking at the the photographs from a random funeral when he should have been doing his work but he happened to notice our girl Emily in the background of a photo and he fires her basically for lying saying she was the dentist when she was actually at a funeral she lies and says that it was a family friend or she knew she knew Rose the the boy doesn't believe her so he fires her anyway Emily has a friend called Maud who live in, who lives in the states and she used to they used to work together I think Maud used to be her boss until she got like promoted and now she's in America and she talks to Maud all the time about her problems everything that's going wrong Maud is one of the few people who actually believes and Emily that her ex-boyfriend was abusive towards her her own family don't believe her because he was a friend of Emily's brother Simon I think his name was uh, her ex-boyfriend Ben was a friend of Simon's so the family think that he's a lovely guy and they couldn't imagine him being an abusive controlling man and you kind of get into it later on but so Maud is one of the only people that actually believes her that she was abused and controlled by evil Ben. Maud found out that she was fired. I, I, I keep saying Maud and all I can think about is Maud Flanders. Maud found out she was fired and is basically just offering her advice on what to do and they kind of get talking and Rose, not Rose, Emily explains how she was at Rose's funeral and they were kind of talking and I can't remember who said it first but was it Maud? They must have been talking about her life and Maud made a comment about how Rose's job at the dentist would now be vacant. <sighs> Imagine actually being that person that sees somebody's death and the first thing you think of is there's now a job opening. Surprise, surprise, our girl at work, Emily, decides to apply for the job at the dentist. <laughs> and she gets it. So that's nice. She's now got a job. And she enjoys it. She feels quite excited being like part of a team now. And Rose posted so much good stuff about the dentist and all the girls there. And the owner called Owen. Emily is so excited to now be part of the team. Of course, everyone is on edge, slightly emotionally unstable because they've lost their colleague, their friend. They're all a bit emotional. They kind of get over it kind of quickly. <laughs> but they're not, they're not always sad. They make Emily feel very welcome. So that's nice. <laughs> Along the way, Rose, I keep, no, I keep looking at the title of the book and I keep thinking the main character is Rose. It's Emily. Emily meets Kian, who is Rose's husband, now widower. And they kind of get chatting. He's a bit rude to her to begin with, but then they get chatting and I think he invited her out for coffee as a way of saying thanks because I think or to apologize because he's a bit rude to her to begin with so they get chatting and they become friends and she kind of offers advice and tries to help him out with Jack the baby it helps him come to terms with his wife's death and she becomes basically a good friend good friend to him I could kind of see where that was going I was quite suspicious because in a way he did seem to although he although he kept occasionally going on about how much he missed Rose, missed his wife, there were a few times where it felt like he'd almost forgotten about her. I had my suspicions. 
about the husband. As the book progressed, it was quite... I mean, it had a pretty good pace. It was pretty good. The pace was pretty good. I didn't feel like it was just dragging along. Maybe a couple of times it did, but I was always kind of... I was always just intrigued of what was what was coming next. There was always some sort of curveball, a, a catch thrown in that made you kind of like, ooh... A couple of chapters are told from the perspective of Rose in past tense, like talking about the past. They were quite interested because they, Emily's chapters are telling you one thing and then Rose kind of quite early on contradicts what's happening. So you realise quite quickly that something is amiss in her perfect life. It's hinted at very, in the early beginning, I kind of saw it, I saw it coming. And then it just kind of gets progressively more intense later on when you realise what is actually going on. So that was quite interesting. I liked her chapters a lot. There was nothing about this book that I would say that I actually disliked. If there is, I can't remember. A few times I felt there was a lot of kind of writing cliches. One thing in particular was a couple of times, but three or four times, the author wrote the, the phrase... Oh, something along the lines of, say she was like talking to somebody and she was nervous or she was excited or whatever. At the end of the conversation or at the end of the paragraph it would say something like, it wasn't until after he left I realised I was holding my breath the whole time. Something like that. And I've probably read that line before in like so many works of literature, I've never really noticed it. But because lately I've been watching a lot of videos by YouTubers about like, author tropes and badly done ones and the overused ones and tropes that are done badly and I remember reading a comment that somebody made about authors using the term about like letting out a breath that I didn't realize I was holding holding my breath and it basically your the entire conversation you're like holding your breath and you don't realize that you're doing it if I had encountered this before in literature I've never noticed but after reading that comment it kind of put it in my mind so then when I read it in this book I kind of took a minute and <laughs> so I was kind of thinking about it. I was just thinking about that call made and how it was in this book and that's about the only thing I can think of. Sometimes the character of Emily, she flew off the handle a bit too quickly. She sometimes could be perceived as being a kind of shy character and then she could suddenly be very outspoken with certain things. She maybe overreacted a lot of times and as somebody who is very shy, I very seldom will like overreact or make myself heard, especially if I'm in a situation where somebody's like giving me a telling off or somebody's saying something that I don't necessarily agree with. Unless it's somebody I know really well and I know I could like have a conversation with you about it, I will just stay quiet and I probably won't voice my opinion. What I did like, even though I was seeing things that Emily wasn't necessarily seeing, it was interesting just to show you how somebody can be controlled or abused in a certain way and they don't realise that it's abuse, that it's somebody's trying to control you and manipulate you. It was interesting how Emily was going along with everything and not seeing the bigger picture or reading between the lines. Sometimes it can be quite infuriating, especially when you know the truth and you're practically screaming at the paper, like open your eyes. But I guess it does just show you how people will react in some situations. She came through in the end for us. Yes, I believe. <laughs> it definitely has like an interesting read for anybody who does like a bit of mystery to find out what actually happened. Was her death just an accident? Was it not? I definitely, I definitely liked it. I'd probably give it a four out of five. The writing was pretty good. I probably should like make notes in future because I keep rolling off on the tangent and then my mind just goes blank and I can't remember what I'm talking about or what I can talk about. The end and death did come as a bit of a shock to me. I will admit. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Unpleasantly surprised, I suppose. But yeah, it definitely is a good read for anybody who likes nothing too complicated. I am more when it comes to mysteries, I love it when it's told from the perspective of like a civilian so not like a police officer or like a detective i don't know why i always prefer like a civilian story where it's like a maybe like a friend of the victim or in this case a stranger 
and solves the mystery or helps to do it if like can they maybe help in the police with inquiries or whatever but I always kind of love it a bit more than like seeing it from the eyes of a detective maybe it's because like I'm a civilian myself <laughs> There's some book club questions in the back we could discuss. How do you think the men in this novel are portrayed? Um, <laughs> the use of social media and how we show ourselves to others is a theme in the book. Do you think social media makes people more competitive with each other? Definitely. What did you think of the title of the book? Do you think it ties in well with the theme of domestic abuse? Would you have given the book a different title? I mean... Does it, does it need a new title? I mean, what else could you call it? Hit and Run? <laughs> the Simpsons Hit and Run. Maud Flanders. Oh my god. Conspiracy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I like that her name was Rose. Signifies that she's dead. My only issue with it, I don't know why. I kept saying her name was Rosie. I don't even know why. I kept saying that. It just maybe I'm more used to the name Rosie than I am Rose. The book deals with some very dark themes, notably the issue of suicidal thoughts and depression. Do you think these issues were handled sensitively? Yeah, I'd say so. It's one of those things though, everybody's different. I think I'm done. Am I done? I can't think of anything else to say. Got nothing to it. Actually, I'll tell you one thing about this book. It made me want to work in a dentist. <laughs> it just seems so nice. Everybody all loved each other. They were all good friends. They had to help out though. Like they were, some of them were receptionists. Rose was the receptionist. And so Emily becomes a receptionist. But then they have to help out sometimes. So like as a nurse, dental nurse. So I couldn't do that. I couldn't work with other people's teeth unless they were like perfect. But <laughs> I hate teeth. I hate, mm, hate the dentist. Maybe it would cure my fear. It does make me want to find a job with like a happy, happy workforce. But was it an entirely happy workforce? You'll have to read the book to find out. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I'm absolutely rambling now and I feel like I haven't even really talked about that much. One thing I will add, I was disappointed in a way that the Emily's backstory with Ben, it's not something that she talks about in like a, like a flashback or anything like that. She just kind of makes these passing comments about Ben and how she was abused and obviously that her family didn't believe her. So it was kind of thrown to us in tidbits at the start and then there was a point where I think she properly kind of spoke about it a bit. But that was kind of it. It was never really brought up again. Um, I think she, by the end of the book, she had kind of mended the... What's that word? Mend the bond broke by pride. <laughs> Fate be changed. Look inside. Mend the bond. Torn by pride. Does that how it goes? Full marks if anybody knows what that's from. But yeah, she mends the bond between her and her parents. But it's never really discussed if they, in the end, ever believed her. And it's never really kind of... I feel like it's quite sad that obviously she doesn't really get her justice. I don't know if this is a spoiler. She, the whole aspect of, like, Ben in the story is just that she suffered once at the hand of a man. And now he's off living his best life. Which I suppose is quite true to life. Because not everybody is going to get imprisoned or charged for what they've done. Which sucks, really. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. And I shall see you all sometime. <laughs> Bye.